Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how to use the painterly guided edit for this very interesting kind of painted in or brushed in effect. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. When you subscribe, hit that notification bell icon to get notifications of my new videos. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way to do that is with my training course. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, let's get to it. Like all of the Photoshop Elements guided edits, the painterly effect is very easy to use, but there are a lot of options you need to know about to get the most out of this particular edit. I'm just going to delete all of this excess stuff up here. That's all the effect. I'll delete that. And we'll go back to just the basic photograph right here. You can use any photo you want, but if you want to use this photo, there's a link for that on my download page. There's a link for that, of course, in the description. Okay, let's go over here. Here's my original image. Just open your image up, and then let's go to the Guided Edit section right here. There are several tabs in here under Guided Edits. Basics, Color, Black and White, Fun Edits, Special Edits, and Photo Merge. We're looking at Fun Edits right now. And you want this one right down here with this dog on it. You see, there it is. And it's called Painterly. Let's click on that one. That brings up the Painterly Edit. It's going to load that in, and you'll see your original picture here right in the middle. Now up here, upper left-hand side, you have a couple options on the view. After only, before only, or you can do a before and after, either vertical or horizontal, so you can see what the effect looks like. I'll leave mine on the after only. You can also zoom in with the zoom tool right up here, or with the zoom control right there. Okay, the first thing you need to do is to take a look and choose your brush. And that's right over here where it says paintbrush. Click on paintbrush, opens the brush section, it puts on this kind of a light mask in there, and then you can see the brush right there on the page. That's the actual brush, and if you work this as a stamp, you get the best effect. And what I mean is just clicking once, and it stamps it like that. If you pull it across, it doesn't work as well. So it's much better if you use it as a stamp as opposed to using it as a brush. And if you want to back up, it's just using the standard keyboard shortcut, which is Control-Z, and that backs up. Okay, now under this, we have a couple things here. There are two buttons here, Hide and Show. The Show does that. It opens it up, and that's the part you're going to be seeing. The Hide allows you to use the brush like an eraser and erase out some of that other brush stroke. So you can kind of think of this as Paint and Erase instead of Show and Hide. I'll just use the Z key again, Control Z, and back up out of that. There we go. We'll leave ours on the Show setting. Now below that we have presets, and this is simply four different brush types. Let's do our bold strokes right there. That's when we already saw that one. And then we have the rough bristles. There it is. And then we have confetti, which is interesting. Confetti actually changes the shape, and it scatters these things. I'll show you how that works in just a moment. And then down here, the round rhythm right there. Again, all of these work best if you use them as a stamp like that, as opposed to pulling it across as a brush. I guess let's go ahead and undo that. Let me show you that confetti real fast. An interesting one. This also gives me a chance to talk about the size right down here. If you pull the size down, notice how the confetti, you can see there on the white, the confetti gets smaller. If I pull the size up, it gets larger. So the size right here controls the size of your brush. Now with the other three brushes, I recommend using these as stamps. You can actually use the confetti as a brush if you want to. It kind of does the same thing. Just pull it like that, and it scatters them around your painting. With this, it's best if you just work in the middle, just real tight in the middle, and let the confetti brush scatter that around the page. You can just stay right in the very center and just kind of move it around, and it will do the whole scatter effect for you. Really interesting little tool right there. Notice also that the transparency is different on these. There's kind of a varying transparency as well. I actually kind of like the confetti one. Okay, I'm just back up on that one. That's the Control Z key again, and I'll back out of those. And then we'll use the basic brush, the first one that is set up, and that's the top one here, and that's the bold strokes. This is the same one that they used up here on the dog image, and they used it as a stamp on the dog image. It's pretty small right there. Let's bring our size up a bit. Maybe a bit too large. Maybe come down just a little bit, maybe about 150 in there. 152, that's pretty good. So again, if you just stamp, it'll give you that stamp effect. Now, you don't want to have this just matching on your edges. You want to have some variation on your edges. And you can do that 
by changing the size and changing the angle in here. I'm going to rotate this around just about a quarter of the way. See how the angle changes? You can see it right there. Let me change the angle again, and it's now changed again. So you can rotate this around and change the rotation of the brush and put in some more variation. What I'd recommend doing is coming in here and change your brush sizes a little bit. Do a stamp like that. Change the brush angle a little bit. Do a different stamp. Be another little brush angle change, a little size change. A couple of those. And just kind of work around on this, adjusting these different settings in here. And that gives you variation on your image. And it'll make it look more interesting. I guess pretty good. I'm not going to go much further than that. Just have just some basic stuff. I want to have a lot of outside area showing on this one. I'll double click a couple times right in the middle here to make sure I get their face correct. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little something right down here. I'm going to bring my size down a little bit and I want to have it poking out a bit on that side. So I'll rotate the brush angle around to get that poker I want. That's pretty good. I'll just do one right there. Just a little brush bit happening there. Okay, there's our basic look. And again, I was using this as a stamp and not as a brush, just changing my size and changing the brush angle. You can also adjust the opacity but I found it, it kind of goes to more transparent on the edges anyway, so it's not really as critical on that. Okay, once you're happy with your basic shape, come down and choose a canvas color right here. I just pulled this sidebar there. You can pull this up and down from the sidebar. There you go. There's a white background, which I think works out very well. There's a black background. You can also choose a custom color in here. Click on your custom color. You get an eyedropper tool and come in and you can choose a color right off of your image. So you can actually have kind of a color coordinated background if you come in and choose a nice color right from the image. Okay, I'll stick with white on that one. Okay, so we have our color selected. We now have two options down below here, the canvas texture option and the effect option. The canvas option, the texture, puts a texture on the outside canvas out here and the effect puts an effect on the actual image. We'll start off here with the texture, click on that and I'll bring it down just a bit more. You have six textures in here, and you can adjust the opacity on that. Just go through this. I'm, I'm going to make these real dark so you can really see those. There's the different textures. It's kind of a linen texture in there, kind of a papery kind of a texture. We'll go with this one, and then you can adjust the opacity down until you have the effect that you want. I want this fairly subtle, just about like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, so the texture allows you to come in here and apply the texture onto the background of the image, onto the canvas of the image. Okay, next below that we have the effect. And again, there are six of these, six different effects. There's a dry brush effect, paint daubs effect, smart looks, sprayed strokes, watercolor, and rough pastels. I'll show you each one of these. There's a first one and looks kind of weird. I'll use the Control Z keyboard shortcut, get out of that one. Let's do the second one here. Again, a little odd. Let's do our third one. That's not too bad. That's maybe an interesting look on that. So that one might actually work out okay on this. Control Z, let's check our next one. And that's right there. That's not too good. Control Z, open it up again. Now you can also use the wheel on your mouse, the scroll wheel, to scroll up and down on this list on the right hand side. Let's do this one now. This is the watercolor. That's not too good either. Undo that. Now your image may work differently for these different effects. It depends upon the image. In this case with the faces, that's what I'm looking at right here. If it gets too messed up, they don't really look that great. So like that's not really that great. Control Z again. But I did kind of like this one over here. That's the smart looks. And that's not too bad. Kind of a sepia tone and a little bit of a more of a subtle look on that. I think we'll stick with that one. Okay, so we've gone through. We've done all of our adjustments in here in the painterly effect. Now come down where it says next. Click on next. And we now have the option of what to do with this once we've gone this far. You can save it out or save as. Just put it back on your disk. I always choose save as. Give it a different name so you know that you've applied the painterly effect onto it. Or continue editing in quick mode or in expert mode. We'll be doing this one, expert mode. Or you can just go right to sharing this on Flickr or Twitter if you want to. I always go to expert mode just in case I want to tweak things. So we'll do that. We'll go up here to Expert, brings it over. And you can see how this is all divided up into different layers in here, which gives us more control on working with this whole image. You can show or hide your layers and see what happens. There is that effect applied to it. So you can show or hide that one. This one has the mask. That's that mask right there. That's the image masked. 
So you can adjust the mask again if you want to actually do more on your mask right on this. Just go to the layer mask side, use any of your tools to adjust that layer mask. Now hide that one. You can see that the background texture is actually hidden in here. It's probably this one right here is our background texture. There it is. But that's overridden, of course, by this layer up here, which combines this, all of this stuff into this new layer. So there we go. That's how to use that painterly effect. And again, I think it's a real nice, interesting effect. It's very quick to do. The real trick here is to use those controls, use those adjustments on the paintbrush. Use the paintbrush as a stamp and use your size controls and your rotation controls to get the most interesting variation out of that to make the best possible effect. And then you can try the textures for the background. You can try those effects on the image. They may or may not work. It's up to you. Of course, when you get to this point, you now have everything available to you, all your other tools, to do anything else you want to this as well. So you have a lot more options once you're here back inside of the expert mode. Okay, so there we go. That's using the guided edit painterly effect. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you click on share. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so. Also, leave comments on my videos. The more likes, shares, and comments I get, the better my videos show up on YouTube, and that makes it easier for me to be able to do more videos in the future. So go ahead, leave those likes, leave those shares, and leave those comments. I answer comments every single day. So if you have any questions, leave it as a comment, and I'll answer that right away. And of course, the best way to learn how to use Photoshop Elements is with my complete training course, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.